think I'm going to start. I, th I think I'm going to start because we want to give these gentlemen the full time. So today we have um, Radesh Balakrishnan, our general manager of OpenStack from Red Hat, and Dwayne DeCapiti, <laughs> close enough, Congrats. Dwayne, director of OpenStack product management at Cisco. And these gentlemen are here to tell us a little bit about how they're working together to deliver OpenStack solutions for next generation IT. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. So in this session, we'll be discussing um, Cisco and Red Hat OpenStack solutions. I'm a very fortunate Radesh, the general manager for OpenStack at Red Hat. Um, we've done a lot of work with your team, you know, Mark and Perry um, and others. And we were briefly um, discussing yesterday, and we talked a lot about, you know, I really like the, in the Red Hat earnings calls, you know, Jim Whitehurst and the team, they go into a lot of detail on customer wins with OpenStack. They talk about, you know, the number of six-figure, seven-figure, and even eight-figure deals that involve open, OpenStack. And when I see Red Hat, I mean, you're clearly, you know, doubling down your investment on OpenStack, you know, almost kind of betting the farm, if you will, on OpenStack. So, like, what are you seeing from your customers in terms of some of the challenges that they're seeing um, that are causing them to embrace OpenStack at such a high rate? First off, uh, thank you for having me here. And those of you who chose wisely not to have a beer and come here, <laughs> appreciate that. Um, so, you know, we are all in for, from a Red Hat perspective on OpenStack. Like you said, we're betting the farm. We're not seeing OpenStack as just a destination in itself, but rather the fabric for everything we do moving forward. So we'll talk a little bit about our portfolio, et cetera, later. Back to the core question here, what are we seeing from customers? You know, day in and day out, I'm spending my time, my teams are spending time talking to customers across the globe. We are paying subscription customers of OpenStack across the globe as well. Probably the first thing that I realized, you know, and I get goose pimples around, is the pace at which things are happening in customers' environment, right? Um, you know, I have reasonable amount of gray hair, not as much as some of you or all of you out there, but uh, <laughs> having been in the industry, you know, swam the uh, tank, if you will, I've never seen a time where the mandate from top down to move at million miles an hour has been this prevalent, right? So that's, that's yeah. So that's the first kind of characteristic that I see, which is very different from what we've seen in the last decade or it, so. It, it's very true, and also, so um, you know, you, you're from Microsoft, right? Big driver behind Azure and Hyper-V, and I believe you were the product manager for Windows 2000. So you've pretty much seen almost all the trends, you know. Yeah, that's true, you know, and I'm not, you know, ashamed of admitting my past, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, the reality is even Microsoft has woken up to the reality which is in front of us, which is open source is not an if, but for what workloads and what use cases are you bringing in, right? So just like I as an individual have made the transition, a lot of organizations are also making uh, the transition. The sort of the second um, aspect that I'm hearing uh, from customers is, this whole notion of choice of deployment footprint, right? Just five or six, you know, I used to be a Hyper-V guy. Six or seven years ago, it was a, hey, we have to move everything into virtualization and that's it, everything physical is dead or whatever is the next thing, we should move uh, cloud, move it all over there. I think in the last, you know, 18 to 24 months, a lot of pragmatism has set in in that customers clearly recognize that there's going to be physical footprint, there's going to be virtual footprint, there's going to be private cloud footprint, and there's going to be public cloud footprint. Now the million or multi-billion dollar question is, what workload is going to be in which footprint? And how can a vendor, uh, such as Red Hat, as well as Cisco, provide a solution that they can sleep at night, right, with across these four footprints? So that's another kind of theme that I'm hearing from uh, customers, too. Um, and just to round out my observations in terms of customers, the third one, you know, the slide is also prompting me to talk about bimodal IT as a construct. I know this is one um, analyst view, which is Gartner's view. It could be called third platform in IDC's terminology, but the long and short of it is that if you look in terms of the nature of the applications, the set of people, how they behind, uh, behave in building that application, or, for that matter, what goes into that application, all these things, three things have changed fundamentally between the old traditional way and the new way, right? 
So if you look at the nature of the applications in the, uh, the, the mode two, as Gartner calls it, or agile mode, if you will, they are stateless VMs, um, you know, as at OpenStack Summit, you guys all know that, you know, like the palm of your hand. Uh, so that's by default the construct that's in, you know, in the eyes of the CIOs, if you will. The second is in terms of what goes behind in, if you look at in a software factory that's making these applications. Earlier, if uh, IT shops were running a marathon, now they're running sprints, right? So, so that's the other... Uh, dimension of change that I see. And the third dimension is, like I'd earlier said, open source used to be, you know, somebody called it cancer, somebody called it, I don't know whether I can bet my business on, etc. cetera, too. Open source is driving the innovation containers to any of the new buzzwords that you talk about. It was all driven by open source. So I think we are in an amazing paradigm shift yeah. moment. All the things that um, the customers want between Red Hat and Cisco are in a position to deliver, which hopefully we can cover more of. What are you seeing um, uh, from customers uh, from your vantage point? So uh, I'm seeing very similar things. I mean, you know, and you're right, it's good to be agile. Um, it's, it's an exciting time in, in the industry. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, you were a product manager in the, in the past. Um, so I've been in this industry for over a quarter century now, and I mean, I was a software developer um, as well as a product manager for software products, and I was that person before. You're building an application, you want to get it into a customer's hands, and the way it used to be was, you know, you had to have someone put a server in, then you had someone cable up the server, then you had someone have to put the access list on, and that whole process, I mean, could literally take months, months or, or even yeah. more sometimes. Right? So the power of, you know, the cloud and DevOps, you know, the, the self-serve portal idea, you know, is, is extremely powerful, and, and we see, you know, lots of, lots of interest and lots of adoption with that as well. Um, you mentioned some of the new applications too, like containers and, and big data. Um, another thing that really resonates with customers is, you know, things are moving so fast, they want to make a bet on something that they know is going to be protected. And, you know, they see OpenStack getting support, you know, with containers, with Magnum that we're working on, you know, big data with Hadoop, for example. They see OpenStack as, as a platform for that mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. so, they're, so they're extremely excited. Um, you know, some challenges too, you know, with, with the cloud as we see, you know, some things with security and compliance and, you know, and just visibility. You know, in the cloud. But you know, the previous session um, for APIC with uh, Mike Cohen and Clayton. Anyone here st stay for the previous session by any chance? So Joe did. So, um, so they talked a lot about you know how um, APIC provides you know visibility into the cloud and some of the things that we're working on together. So we're, we're seeing absolutely some of the same things, and it's an extremely exciting time in the industry. That's great. Yeah, that's great. So. Um, Cisco and Red Hat, you know, it's a great partnership, right? I mean, from our perspective, right, so, you know, we're working with Mark McLaughlin a lot, you know, Perry, uh, Joe, and others, I mean, you know, really doing a, doing a great job. You should give them a raise, by the way, I think, so. <laughs> Look at that. Is, is that what they told you? That's what they, they have that's to pay for that, me. but. Um, <laughs> so I'm assuming that's a tee up for the question. Well, and so, you know, so, you know, we're working with Red Hat, you know, on, on a daily, you know, weekly uh, basis. You know, we're building a lot of great stuff together. So, I mean, we see the synergies firsthand and, you know, we see it from the Cisco side through the sales force also. But what's some of your perspective about, you know, why Cisco and Red Hat and how they're helping to solve customer problems right. for OpenStack? So, look, this partnership is something that I'm very, very personally involved in and personally very, very excited about uh, for the simple reason that here we have, you know, the number one provider of infrastructure uh, for cloud environments today, that's Cisco, getting together with the number one provider of open source solutions for enterprises, and then saying, hey, look, how do we make the lives of our customers easier, um, faster in terms of their ability to consume the innovation that's happening out there, and at the same time, bring all the abilities that all world demanded security and, you know, enterprise uh, qualities that you expect off, right? So at that level, it's an amazing opportunity that we both are rallying around. You referenced the teams working together, and hopefully we can do justice to some of the output of the teams as well as we talk through this. So very, very excited about the promise of it as well as the fact that we are aligned in terms of the vision that we want to um, enable in the eyes of the customer. Now. It's one thing to have a higher level alignment. Of course, at the end of the day, we need to make sure that we are landing solutions that you all can consume as well. And that's the hard work that you know, we are going through. Hopefully, we'll touch upon some of the ones that are already available 
and signal some of the areas that we are working on. Right. Uh, but the very fact that both of us are aligned to making sure that OpenStack is production ready um, it makes the partnership very exciting from my lens. What's yeah, your um, perspective? Anything to add there? Oh yeah, so um, so absolutely. You know, um, Red Hat, you know, has been a strong contributor to open source. You know, as is Cisco. Um, you know, so for example, you know, the Neutron database. You know, we at Cisco, you know, provided the ability. You know, in a, a team collaborative effort, right? So you can actually do an upgrade of OpenStack. You know, Neutron for the first time. Um, so it's the combination of you know the leader in the cloud infrastructure market. Um, you know, so Synergy a Research Group uh, a report, I believe Jeremy Duke is the author, does a great report. You know, details how Cisco is the leader in cloud infrastructure for public and private clouds. You know, com uh, compute, storage, networking, um, as, as well as security. So you combine that leader in cloud infrastructure market with the leader in cloud, you know, in open source. It's an extremely powerful combination and. You know, a lot of the components we're talking about, like, you know, Cisco UCS servers, Cisco Nexus switches, you know, these are data center staples, you know, people are using them today, you know, V blocks, flex pods, and the ability to leverage that investment and bring it into OpenStack is a, is a huge win. So who here is using UCS or Nexus today? So, awesome, awesome. Who here is using RHEL OSP or RHEL today? All right, excellent, okay. good. All right, we have two thirds of the audience to convert <laughs> as we go along, right? So. Um, you know, a couple of data points from a Red Hat perspective that I'll, I'll touch upon as well. You probably have heard about the fact that, you know, we've been associated with OpenStack for quite a significant number of years. And earlier we talked about it's a Bet the Farm initiative from our perspective. We look at uh, stats in terms of how are we doing um, around community uh, contribution um, as a metric, not because we want to walk around wearing a T-shirt saying we are number one, but rather... For us, you know, our business model is subscription-based, and so if somebody were to call for support, knowing every single piece part that goes into the product that we make available is like a mandatory requirement. You know, that's the right to swipe the card and get into the building kind of uh, capability, right? So showing up with code is something that, you know, we fundamentally believe in. A related reality also is that we, by default, do not write any piece of code that is a forked version or it's a shadow code tree, et cetera, right? So, you know, the, the exciting aspect of OpenStack ecosystem is that a lot of organizations are rallying around OpenStack, but one of the potential pitfalls is that, you know, some of the players could hijack it for their personal, um, you know, beliefs and or ends that they want to accomplish, if you will. So from that perspective, we are very, very clear that just like what we did with Linux, which is upstream first, anything that we do around OpenStack is upstream first, right? right? So there is the guaranteed ability to walk away from us if you've not done uh, a great job of earning your respect as a customer, right? So uh, that's one thing I want to highlight. You know, I think if you look at um, our portfolio in general, um, OpenStack, I made the earlier statement that OpenStack is not the destination itself for us. It's just the foundation for a portfolio of solutions that we believe customers will uh, start adopting in their environment. So this slide essentially captures, for those of you who don't know Red Hat as much, we have, a, you know, there's an art and science to being an open source company and probably, you know, the most successful on planet Earth. We break down our DNA into three steps, right? So the first step in the process is show up with code upstream. Make sure that you're contributing to appropriate community projects. That's step one. Step two is that have a conduit for getting feedback from the early adopters, the mavericks, the ones that are willing to spend their energy, not just play with the product, but also give feedback, what we will call as a community distribution. So, you know, the logos in the middle are all community distribution of the different offerings that we have. And then the last third stage is where we have a enterprise-ready uh, uh, solution backed by uh, n number of years of uh, life cycle support. In the case of RHEL, it can go all the way up to 10 years, if you will, in terms of support. OpenStack is quite not there, but you know, we hope to get there, if you will. So um, as you can see, we, we have offerings from storage to um, uh, middleware platform to management, um, et cetera. So as we're talking about the mode two deployment, all the piece parts that you would need from a technology organization are available from Red Hat in a truly open way so that you can stand up a truly open cloud and be without, you know, sort of the 
gun cocking moment of a proprietary player, if yeah. you will. Well, and it's nice too because you know with that pure open source um, un and unsupported, if you will, option, people can get started right away with RDO, for example, yep. or they can go with Rail OSP. Yep. And I believe this is the same slide that Mark showed earlier today. It's which is another reason why you should give him a raise. No, oh, there you go. I know. So the theme of the day is give Mark a raise. There okay, go. got it. Go. <laughs> Subliminal messaging going That's right. on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, um, and so Gluster, for example, I think um, there's been a few very nice press releases done this week. I yeah. believe there was one around Gluster and Manila. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. So I, actually, if you look at our storage portfolio, we have Ceph as well as Gluster. So mm -hmm. Ceph is for block and Gluster is for file. Um, so there's this I mean, interesting project called Manila, with those of you who are not familiar, which essentially abstracts, you know, multiple, you know, it could even be a, a NetApp filer, if you will, and surfaces that as a file, as a service for OpenStack to consume. So that was the announcement mm -hmm. this week. But the direction we're headed is, uh, we're already seeing every other opportunity of OpenStack and uh, associated with Ceph, right? So because customers are saying, look, I'm looking at a new kind of infrastructure should I look at storage along with that? Should I be stuck to a three-letter name company for storage, or could I be, you know, uh, just like I'm linearly scaling my compute, can I look at uh, commodity hardware-based storage as well, or storage defined, uh, software-defined storage, if you will? So we're seeing a lot of uh, demand there. With the addition of Gluster File as a service, we can be offering you know all kinds of workload support for from a storage perspective. So I could you know go on and on <laughs> all day long about uh, all the offerings oh yeah. in here. So um, great announcements. It's great point. Great point about storage. I mean, some of the newer technologies like like you know OpenStack Swift, you know, for example, is going to make three copies. Uh, big Data Hadoop we talked about makes multiple copies. But when you combine kind of software-defined storage, if you will, like Gluster and Ceph, you combine it with say like Cisco UCS. So mm -hmm. UCS C240. Um, up to 12 l large form factor drive, 60 terabytes, the um, UCS C3160, 60 large form factor drives up to 360 terabytes. But you see, I mean, it's very much a complete compute storage networking solution mm -hmm. between Red Hat and Cisco. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Cisco's strategy with OpenStack, similar to Red Hat as well, you know, big believer in contributing to open source. You know, we mentioned the Neutron database um, being committed upstream. Um, SR single root IO virtualization, right? That was another big one because we contributed that upstream. So now we can start talking about one mission critical workloads like even high performance computing, for example, or even um, NFV network function virtualization that needs SR IOV mm -hmm. as well. So um, lots of upstream contributions, um, a top reviewer, um, certainly for the last release according to Stackalytics. But we also give our customer choices. Um, we talked about some of the press releases this week. You also had a great quote in a press release for the um, uh, Tech Validate, the report, mm -hmm. I believe 310 um, Red Hat customers um, were surveyed. 75% are planning on supporting. It's not even Red Hat customers. You know, 310 um, decision makers okay. uh, across the globe surveyed mm -hmm. by Tech yeah. Validate. Uh, like you said, 73% um, are saying they, are going, they have OpenStack in their plans in the, within the next 18-month time frame. 82% of them are saying the number one need that they have is enterprise uh, class support, which, by the way, we offer, so it's music mm -hmm. to my ears for sure. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, pretty exciting times yeah. for sure. Awesome. And, and then even in the report, I believe, you know, the majority, like 75% roughly were planning on deploying OpenStack on KVM. Mm -hmm. I believe roughly 18% uh, on Hyper-V and, mm -hmm. and, you know, ESXi as well as Zen Server. But, you know, at Cisco, because we support multiple dis uh, distributions, multiple hypervisors, we give customers choices. And we've also innovated a lot around OpenStack. Like one example, so the Ceph EWS, the early warning system, uh, we have that in the Cisco GitHub um, repo. It's a nice way where you can get visualization into the Ceph storage, um, get notification before a Ceph OSD drive fails. So lots of innovation around OpenStack in addition to upstream contributions. You know, very um, dedicated to customer success, however people want to use OpenStack, you know, the global inner cloud of which Red Hat is a big partner of ours. You know, we, uh, Cisco's invested, uh, or pledged to invest a billion dollars in the inner cloud. Um, so however people want to consume OpenStack, they can start putting an application right away on the inner cloud, which is based on OpenStack. 
They can deploy on-prem um, as a managed service behind a firewall. I mean, this is through the, um, the MetaCloud acquisition. Mm -hmm. um, phenomenal success uh, you know, with MetaCloud. The acquisition was actually just done in September of last year, and already the number of managed CPUs has doubled you know, in that time frame. Or you know, deploying an unmanaged on-prem uh, OpenStack Cloud, Cisco UCS Nexus and Red Hat you know, with Cisco validated design. So however people want to consume OpenStack, you know, we have a solution. Correct. Just back to the survey that you were talking about, another data point also is that 59% of those surveyed say that they're going to use it for new workloads and 52% are saying for existing workloads. So that's another area, you know, because I'm sure you all have heard about the pets versus cattle <laughs> argument. I personally don't like it. I think, you know, OpenStack is like a horse. You can call it a pet or a cattle depending <laughs> on your taste or where you're from. Um, the, the reality is that OpenStack is becoming more capable of handling so-called old workloads or legacy workloads mm -hmm. as well, right? And in fact, we are personally pushing the envelope on a couple of fronts as well. High availability, for example, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the, the using Pacemaker as the open technology um, at all levels from hypervisor OS uh, to OpenStack services so that both on the admin side as well as the tenant side, you can get to high availability solution, right? So I think a um, um, lot of work to be done, but we are excited about the kind of the start that we've had in this space, if yeah. you will. Definitely. Another thing about that report that came out this week, um, I believe it indicated that 40% of uh, those 310 IT buyers surveyed plan on deploying containers in an OpenStack environment. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a huge number, 40%. So Absolutely. new workloads as well as mission critical workloads as well as future workloads. Absolutely. And you know, from our vantage point, unlike some of the other virtualization providers, we don't have an ax to grind, right? So whether you go for container as a format or VM as a format, depending on your workload, we are absolutely fine. So what we are working toward is making sure that from a tenant side on OpenStack, you could be um, having a bare metal physical footprint or a VM footprint or a container footprint and still be able to manage that with uh, you know similar level of processes yeah. and maturity. Yeah, it's an excellent point. I mean, you know, we've been collaborating on the Magnum project for containers. Um, there's an ironic plugin for Cisco UCS for bare metal as a service. Mm -hmm. Even you know the next version of RHEL OSP7 will have the I believe the group-based policy plugin as well. Support so, for group yeah. A policy so, for sure. So lots of lots of innovation. Right. But, so, kind of in terms of the things that we're building now, right? So. We talked a lot about you know, the OpenStack customers and the adoption and the traction you know, and, and some of the drivers behind OpenStack. You know, what is your take in terms of the state of the stack, if you will? I mean, you know, with your history, you've seen lots of different um, mm -hmm. themes and flows and, and changes in the industries. What kind of proof points are you seeing from your customer in terms of where OpenStack is and right. whether it's ready for production? Yeah. I think we kind of let the cat out of the bag. You <laughs> used some of the survey results earlier. You know, we're seeing amazing <laughs> level of interest from both the enterprise customers that we spend our time day in and day out, as well as on the telco side, given the network function virtualization has become a key driver. Mm -hmm. um, uh, both are happening at the same time, except that in telco space, this calendar year is where all the proof of concepts are happening, and next calendar year is when the initial deployments will be happening. And we are working the, um, uh, really hard to make sure that carrier grade features make its way to our OpenStack offering. Uh, so we're fundamentally taking the approach that rather than get a carrier grade version of OpenStack, let's make OpenStack carrier grade as the approach, right? So which is very different from some forked approach some of the other players are taking. Um, the catch with that is that clearly we need to make sure that it's upstream aligned, blueprints are approved, et cetera, so there might be some slight delays, but I think eventually the community as well as the world at large will benefit if we did that. Uh, back to some of the other momentum points, this I believe came from the last uh, OpenStack uh, mm -hmm. Summit survey, you know, essentially calls out three key points. One is that it's not a toy that people are playing with anymore, what 46% is saying they are using it in production. Secondly, in terms of workloads, we are seeing maturation of the type of workloads. It's not some, you know, the CIOs, you know, 
pet project kind of thing, but rather we're talking about from web services to even you know database um, apps, etc., being onboarded into an OpenStack um, environment, right? So I think the pro work around database as a service, etc., as mm -hmm. that's maturing, will help fuel this even further, right? So that's the other uh, data point. Um, from our own uh, lens as Red Hat, a data point that we look at very carefully is how many partners do we have? You know, think of ISVs, SIs, um, you know, other uh, providers of technologies around um, OpenStack itself. In the last 18 months, we've had from zero to 275 partners with certified solutions around our commercial OpenStack offering. So that's another sign of maturity mm -hmm. that there's choice across compute storage, networking management, and applications that's available on this platform of the future. And the good news is the future is not tomorrow, it's today, right? So that's a, a great place to be in. Absolutely. Yeah, so, and we're seeing very similar things on the Cisco side. Like, so one joint customer we have, you know, the Eli and Edith Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, or as Joe likes to call it, the Broad. Um, so they're, they're, I mean, this is, you know, they're doing genome sequencing, you know, part of the Human Genome Project, um, you know, literally doing work to make life better, you know, changing the world. And uh, some great quotes, you know, from Chris and James about how Cisco and Red Hat together, you know, the leader in cloud infrastructure and the leader in open source. Um, software are getting together to solve their customer problems. Um, I believe they're deploying, um, you know, UCS uh, blades um, also. So you see another nice proof point of both blades and rack mount servers. Whoever wants to, you know, yeah. either form works all yeah. managed by UCS manager. But I am, you know, we're definitely at Cisco. We're seeing the same thing. Um, conversations are kind of, you know, transitioning, you know, from how to do a pilot to how to do production. So mm -hmm. it's, it's it's very exciting. That's great. So I think I'm supposed to ask you the next question, which oh. is. Uh, you know, how do you see our combined vision um, uh, coming together and how are we working towards delivering on yeah. that promise? Yeah. yeah, so I mean, we're delivering a complete, you know, compute storage and networking solution, you know, public, private, um, hybrid clouds. You know, it kind of starts with the plugins, right? So, you know, RHEL OSP and stuff on UCS. Um, networking plugins, right? So there's the Nexus 1000B plugin. Um, you know, there's say a, you know a Nexus uh, 9000 or, or hardware-based Nexus switch plugin for, for VLAN provisioning. Um, there's the APIC plugin, you know, that Mike Cohen and Clayton talked about earlier with key info systems for you know a nice spine and leaf um, fabric, you know, which is very powerful. Um, and then the ACI policies as well, right? So I mean, and group-based policies. This is a fundamental change, right, in terms of how applications kind of configure the infrastructure, right? This is a way the application actually configures the entire leaf and spine infrastructure. And the application intent, you know, it's no longer defining IP addresses and punching holes, if you will, in a network. The application configuration stays with the components, you know, whether it's the load balancer or the firewall or the databases, the VMs kind of move without the network. So it's, it's extremely powerful, right? So it's an example of how, you know, ACI kind of drives policies um, across the infrastructure. You know, we talked before about um, how it could take months before an application could go on to, you know, a physical server in kind of the old world. This is an example, too, where something, that configuration and that operations, that monitoring that used to take a very long time, right, can now take just a few hours to design and then it's up and running in the fabric. So it's one example of what Cisco and Red Hat are doing. And, you know, Chris from Red Hat's been very involved yeah. in the Just standard Just to also. add one perspective here, right? So if, when you look at OpenStack, one of the areas that I get the most feedback on is around networking, right? Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of maturity of features, functionality, et cetera. Now with the combination of ACI where we're actually moving up the complexity over to uh, a policy-driven infrastructure, um, and support for things like group-based policy, we can uh, bring in the agility that's needed for networking. Mm -hmm. um, um, it doesn't have to be a silo. And more importantly, solving the problem that customers are facing with networking around OpenStack itself, right? So I'm doubly excited mm -hmm. about yeah. the potential yeah. here. Yeah, excellent. Um, and the inner cloud that we mentioned as well, you know, so um, global inner cloud is production, you know, um, Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, you know, OpenShift is certainly part of the conversation. Uh, we have a great demo of Red Hat OpenShift in the Cisco booth mm -hmm. um, downstairs. Also, we talked about big data. There's a uh, Cloudera as well as a, um, or a Hortonworks and a MapR, I believe, demo downstairs in the Cisco booth. But these are all kind of things that are part of the conversation of the intercloud. And the intercloud Fabric 221 uh, was recently released also, which is, you know, a hybrid cloud architecture, which is really exciting because, and that is currently in beta, um, 
But what that allows is say you have a workload that was on, say, ESXi, for example. You can now be bursted in a hybrid cloud you know, to the inner cloud. Or even architecturally speaking, right, say a workload was on EC2, and now maybe that can come to a private cloud, you know, mm -hmm. um, on-prem deployment with, with, with RHEL OSP and KVM. So it's an, another area of collaboration with the hybrid cloud that we're extremely excited about. Right. Right. So, you know, just to summarize from um, the joint partnership, clearly, if you look at from a hybrid cloud perspective, you need to have a private cloud and a public cloud. The public cloud offering is intercloud. That's based on our OpenStack and our joint efforts there. Uh, from a private cloud perspective, you have clearly the UCS offering as a starting point. Mm -hmm. And if you're into SDN and you want to solve the networking challenges, also in the same vein, ACI is an amazing offering that's mm -hmm. certified with RHEL OSP as well. Mm -hmm. So with the combination of these three, best of, you know, um, um, across physical, virtual, private cloud, and public cloud, you can stitch together a cloud infrastructure powered by Cisco and Red Hat. Absolutely. <coughs> And uh, other areas of collaboration also. So, you know, we're, we talked a lot about OpenStack. Um, we're also doing a lot of innovations around open daylight as well. And even in uh, Mike's previous conversation on ACI, extremely powerful. So um, the OpFlex agent where there's actually an open daylight, open flow based controller through ACI pushing policy now down all the way to the KVM hypervisor through that OpFlex agent. So it's extremely powerful. Um, there's also a great demo of open daylight um, a little bit earlier, um, OpenStack Neutron, right, can plug right into an open daylight controller or as well, you know, and other traditional um, network controllers as well. So you clearly have this kind of complete open cloud solution, you know, between Cisco and Red Hat. Um, with the APIC controller for, you know, bare metal through Ironic, through VMs, mm -hmm. as well as containers through Magnum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we quite quite a bit on what is already available, the areas that we are working mm -hmm. together, et cetera. Do you want to venture to, uh, you want to guess where the future <laughs> is headed? Sure. Um, so lots of things that we're working on for the future. Um, one thing is we've started the process and, and we're going to do more of it in the future. It's just the CVDs, the Cisco validated designs. You know, we hear a lot, you know, love OpenStack, love the idea, you know, but how do I get started, right? Kind of the Cisco validated design, you know, de-risks that proposition, shows kind of the step-by-step, -step, provides, you know, all the blueprints, if you will, and the best practices. So we continue to do that. Um, you know, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, it's a great area of collaboration. You know, the OpFlex agent, you know, some of the newer releases of ACI with floating IP support, these are something that we're extremely excited about, you know, with more tighter integration, you know, with, with KVM and the mm -hmm. hypervisor. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, clearly continue to get excited about Ceph as an, you know, in many ways I see Ceph and OpenStack as chips and salsa of the <laughs> today, tomorrow, if you will. So um, working with uh, uh, Cisco and making sure that the consumption experience of Ceph plus OpenStack with UCS is uh, meeting the high bar that Cisco has already set from enterprise consumption is a mm -hmm. key priority uh, moving forward. Um, container, we talked about, you know, I can't contain my con enthusiasm around containers. I'm assuming most of you are in the same um, uh, uh, category as well. We clearly have work to be done to make sure that the experience, ongoing administrative experience as well as ongoing living with containers is reaching the same level of maturation as virtualization as a technology. So that's another opportunity mm -hmm. area that we are uh, working toward. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, we got the countdown sign from the back. Um, we really appreciate um, you know the time today and really enjoyed the conversation. Um, we have a, a few moments left for Q and A uh, before we close. If there's any questions from the audience. No prices for the first one. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hi, just a quick question. Uh, Hi. So, I, quite understandable why Cisco is so motivated to provide plugin, neutral plugins to OpenStack Neutron. Obviously, a lot of you know switches, and then obviously APIs. Uh, sorry, Epic and the ACI infrastructures. Mm -hmm. It's quite understandable. But um, I'm wondering how much Cisco is committed to the open daylight control SDN controller side. So. Yeah, that's my question. How much committed is Cisco? Sure. Yeah, sure. open data controller. 
Um, so, you know, we at Cisco, you know, are very committed to open source standards like OpenStack and Open Daylight. Um, David Ward was here today, um, and in fact, Cisco um, um, has, you know, Open Daylight controllers as well, um, and there's some new releases um, with Open Daylight that we're extremely excited about. So, we're actually kind of, if you will, just getting started with open daylight, right? So, you know, you had the, um, the hydrogen and the helium release, you know, the lithium release we're looking forward to. I think you're also going to see open daylight um, actually kind of embedded in other kind of products, if you will, as well, because, you know, it's a great orchestration technology, you know, for network function virtualizations. So committed to open stack and open daylight. And it's not even an either or. I mean, you know, you can use them both together. And, you know, the Opflex agent is a great example of how we're actually using OpenFlow, open daylight, kind of to make ACI and OpenStack better, if you will. So there's, you know, at Cisco, you know, we're a big believer in giving choices to the customer. And, you know, there's more than one really good open source networking choice. But uh, OpenStack and open daylight are, we're very excited about. Question to Cisco and Red Hat. So what's the percentage you move towards OpenStack for your internal environment? It's an excellent question. Okay. That's what you should answer that okay. first. Sure. Yeah, well, it's, it's funny because someone, someone just came up to me uh, and told me about a new application on Red Hat OpenStack uh, platform and Cisco. Um, so, so we at Cisco, I mean, you know, we're completely bought in, if you will, to, to OpenStack. We're, we're getting, you know, applications on OpenStack, you know, as, as quickly as possible. Um, Huge Red Hat customer, you know, lots of RHEL, lots of RHEL OSP um, as well. Um, for, for, for new initiatives, I, I mean, it's almost becoming the standard, if you will. In fact, um, there's going to be a presentation from Cisco IT tomorrow about some of the stuff that we're doing um, on OpenStack platform. And even, you know, the inner cloud, you know, we use that a lot internally to kind of spin up new applications as well. Um, but your comment earlier I thought was spot on about how, like, you've almost never seen this much excitement and momentum mm -hmm. um, before, and we're seeing it within Cisco IT also. So from our perspective, you know, if you look at uh, OpenStack dev team, um, we have an internal cloud. I always say that, hey, this is the largest cloud that we are ever going to be building because we're not in the public cloud business. Um, a lot of dev tests uh, for several projects, Heat, for example, is all uh, built on, is all dependent on what we call as the OS1 infrastructure, which is an internally running, plain vanilla, what we sell to customers with no mods being managed internally, right? Um, we are also um, actively looking at our uh, net new applications that we are um, bringing in and then saying, how do we make sure that by default we are using OpenStack as the preferred uh, um, uh, target destination? So we already have Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization, which is KVM-based uh, uh, footprint already. We're not kind of disrupting that, but you know, landing more workloads, um, both from engineering perspective, internal pre-sales usage perspective, and in some, some select cases, we even provide sandboxes to um, select few customers um, um, uh, based on this infrastructure, right? So clearly, I worry a lot about uh, making sure that that's pervasive internally. It again fits in the same category when I when we look at the contribution to upstream. It's not about bragging rights. It's about gaining the knowledge, right? Until you cut code and until you deploy and live with it, you're not going to be able to understand it, right? So it builds that you know uh, confidence in us that we can actually help our customers go through the same journey as well. Very true. Okay, excellent. Um, on behalf of Cisco and Red Hat, we thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us a little bit. We know the agenda and the events are packed in this afternoon, but thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the summit. Thank you very much. Thank you.